The Life of Might Guy Might Guy is a jonin of Konohagakure, a master of taijutsu Guy leads and passes his wisdom onto the members of Team Guy. Welcome to the Imagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Might Guy. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Early Life Guy is the son of Might Dai, who is known throughout Konoha as the Eternal Genin. Dai was not bothered by this moniker and instead was grateful that other people cared enough to know him at all. Dai encouraged this same kind of optimism in Guy, as well as his belief that one always has youth and that they could both become taijutsu masters throughout diligent training. Guy did his best to embody his father's techniques, but had doubts that Dai's words were devoid of any meaning. He nevertheless loved his father and fought others when they called Dai the internal genin mockingly. When one of these fights landed him in the Konoha hospital, Dai encouraged Guy not to be upset by this loss and to instead remember that victory is achieved by defending things that are important. Guy applied to enter Konoha's ninja academy, but didn't pass the entrance exam. Kakashi Hatake was not surprised due to Guy's lack of talent in ninjutsu and genjutsu, which Guy chose to take as a supportive observation. This strength of character convinced Kakashi's father, Sakumo, that Guy was not handicapped by his shortcomings and that he might be offered a position as an alternate in the year's academy class. Guy was indeed allowed to enter the academy with Kakashi, and upon graduation, he was added to a team that, in the anime, was led by Choza Akimichi. The team at one point entered Konoha's tuning exams and passed to the final stage. Guy himself advanced the exam's last one-on-one -on -one match where he lost to Kakashi. While on a mission during the Third Shinobi World War, Guy and his team were attacked by the Seven Swordsmen of Kirigakure. They were rescued by Dai who used the Eight Gates released formation to fight off the Seven Swordsmen. Dai died from opening all eight gates, but it satisfied his one rule for its use, giving his life to protect something precious, namely Guy. Guy at some point decided that Kakashi was his lifelong rival, driven by a desire to prove his perseverance could be just as good as Kakashi's natural genius. He would constantly challenge Kakashi to contests of skill, from eating contests to rock paper scissors. Kakashi was indifferent to these contests, which only fueled Guy's desire to defeat him. In the anime, Kakashi prevailed in the earlier of these competitions, but Guy soon started catching up, eventually achieving only a one point difference in their scores that has remained consistent over the years. Guy is proud of his score despite the fact that, because of how varied the contests are, it's hardly representative of anything. Through their competition, Kakashi and Guy became good friends. They were hanging out together on the night of the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, yet were prevented from helping defend the village, instead being confined within a barrier to keep them safe. In the anime, Guy was aware of the losses Kakashi experienced during and after the Third Shinobi World War and tried to help him deal with them. Following the death of Obito Uchiha, Guy filled in for Obito while Team Minato was on a mission into Iwa territory. When they were surrounded, Guy tried giving his life to allow Kakashi to escape, but they were able to fight off their enemies until reinforcements arrived. Following the death of Rin Nohara, Kakashi's teacher, the fourth Hokage, sent Guy to tail Kakashi on a mission in case memories of Rin started to get to him. This proved wise. When Kakashi began hyperventilating from using the Chidori, the same jutsu that killed Rin, Guy intervened in time to save Kakashi and take him home. Following the fourth's death during the Ninetales attack, Guy requested to be admitted into the Anbu, so that he could help Kakashi through his growing depression. The third Hokage refused his request, which Danzo Shimura seconded, explaining that Guy lacked the necessary darkness for Anbu service. Guy witnessed this darkness when Kakashi provided backup for him during a meeting with the Land of Woods, wherein Kakashi mercilessly killed all of the Land of Woods' forces. Guy asked the third Hokage to remove Kakashi from the Anbu because these kinds of acts didn't become him. When the third eventually complied, Guy suggested that Kakashi try leading a team of Genin to help him regain his lost kindness. Guy at some point heard about a boy in the academy who was unable to use ninjutsu or genjutsu. Guy approached this boy, Rock Lee, and encouraged him to use his youth to keep training. Lee was eventually added to Guy's team Guy, along with Neji Hyuga and Tenten. In the anime, before accepting them, he required them all to demonstrate a desire to succeed no matter the odds. Guy took a particular interest in Lee after the team's first meeting, as Lee wished to become a splendid ninja who could only use taijutsu. 
Guy decided to dedicate his life to help Lee achieve his dream, teaching him all he knew about Taijutsu, telling him the same keys to self-improvement his father had taught him, and encouraging him to use a rivalry with Neji to push him to new heights. Lee developed well under his guidance, as did Neji and Tenten, though Guy felt it was best to have them wait a year before entering the Chunin exams. Chunin exams after holding them back for a year of training, Guy allows his students on Team Guy, which consists of Rock Lee, Neji Hyuga, and Tenten, to enter the Chunin exams being held at Konoha. He worries, however, that they may not behave, so he has Ningame keep an eye on them as they prepare to take the exams. Ningame catches Lee trying to use his front lotus on Sasuke Uchiha, defying Guy's instruction to only use it while protecting something precious. Guy is summoned to reprimand Lee. He punches Lee as punishment and then embraces him out of regret from punching him. Sasuke and his fellow Team 7 members are disturbed by this display. Aware that Team 7 are Kakashi Hatake's students, he asks them how Kakashi is. He apologizes to them for Lee's behavior and tells them all to head to the exam's first stage before he departs. Team Guy advances to the preliminary stage of one-on-one -on -one fights held before the finals, and Guy watches his students' matches and cheers them on. When Tenten is badly abused after her defeat by her opponent Tamari, Guy stops Lee from getting into a fight with Tamari and her Suna teammates. When Neji ignores Guy's request to not bring the Hyuga clan's family issues into his fight with Hinata, Guy intervenes in the match, restraining Neji so that he won't kill Hinata. When Lee is matched against Gara, Guy tells him an important observation he's made. The gourd that Gara has on his back may be significant. Although Lee takes this information with enthusiasm, it doesn't help him against Gara's shield of sand once the fight begins. For this reason, Guy gives Lee permission to remove his ankle weights, thus making him fast enough to bypass Gara's shield. The increased speed is insufficient against Gara, for which reason Guy allows Lee to use the front lotus. The stress the front lotus does to Lee's body provides a brief opening for Gara to escape unharmed, which he takes. Lee, meanwhile, still experiences the after effects of using the front lotus and has difficulty fighting off Gara's attacks. Guy signals to Lee to use the reverse lotus. Kakashi expresses disappointment in Guy when he realizes what he's allowing Lee to do, but Guy defends his decision, as becoming a splendid ninja is the most important thing in Lee's life, and defeating Gara will help him achieve that. The reverse lotus ends up failing as Gara uses the gourd on his back to absorb the attack. Lee is unable to move afterwards, allowing Gara to start crushing his arms and legs. Guy intervenes, forcing Gara to relent. Although Lee has lost the match and has fallen unconscious, his body gets up through muscle memory so that he can keep fighting. Guy tearfully embraces him, assuring him he's already a splendid ninja. Medic Nin come to check on Lee, but from a cursory examination of his injuries, they inform Guy that the damage the reverse lotus did to his body is so severe that Lee won't be able to continue life as a ninja. Guy is devastated by the news, blaming himself for not stopping Lee when he had the chance and for teaching him the reverse lotus in the first place. A month later, on the day before the tuning exam's finals are to be held, Guy visits Lee in the Konoha hospital. He finds Gara in Lee's room, trying to finish him off. Guy threatens to admit Gara to the hospital as an inpatient if he doesn't leave, which Gara complies with. Guy takes Lee to see the final matches the next day. Because of Lee's injuries, most of the first round matches have completed by the time they reach the stadium where the finals are being held. Neji lost in his fight to Naruto Uzumaki. While watching the fight between Sasuke and Gara, both Guy and Lee are surprised by the speed Sasuke has copied from Lee using his Sharingan. Though it makes sense to Guy once he sees Sasuke using Kakashi's Chidori. Konoha Crush the tuning exams are interrupted by an invasion of Konoha and most of these watching the finals are rendered unconscious by a genjutsu. Guy is among those who dispel it and he teams up with Kakashi to fend off against Otagakure's forces. While Kakashi arranges a team of genin to go after Sasuke and Gara, Guy defends the area and then creates an opening for the genin to pass through. Guy worries that they won't be enough, but Kakashi has confidence in them. They return to the fight, eventually eliminating all invaders in the area except for Kabuto, Yakushi, and Baki, who opt to flee rather than face them. Guy and the others then converge on the site where the third Hokage fought Orochimaru, but discover that he's died in battle. Guy attends the third's funeral a few days later. Search for Tsunade When Kakashi is about to be captured by a Katsuki member, Kisame Hoshigaki, on the instructions of his partner Itachi Uchiha, Guy arrives in time to repel Kisame. Kakashi falls unconscious as soon as they arrive, so Guy carries him over to Asuma Sarutobi and Kurenai Yuhi. They share with Guy Kakashi's earlier warning not to look Itachi in the eye because of his Sharingan. But Guy already knows this and tells them how to combat it, looking at Itachi's feet. 
Oh, so obvious. He instructs Kurenai to take Kakashi to a medic and Asuma to assist them in keeping Itachi and Kisame busy until the Anbu reinforcements he's requested arrive. Itachi and Kisame withdraw rather than fight. Guy and the others take Kakashi back to his home to rest, where Guy is informed that Itachi and Kisame are after Naruto. While they're talking, Sasuke comes to visit Kakashi and is confused by his current condition. Guy and the others try keeping the return of Itachi, Sasuke's brother, a secret, but it's unwittingly revealed by Aoba Yamashiro. Sasuke runs off to find Itachi and Guy chases after him. When he catches up, he makes a sneak attack without getting a good look at his target, fearing Itachi's Sharingan. He ends up attacking Jiraiya, who has already driven off Itachi and Kisame, and Guy apologizes once he realizes his mistake. When Guy prepares to head back to Konoha, Jiraiya asks him to take Sasuke, who has been rendered unconscious by Itachi. Guy tells him that Kakashi is in the same condition and muses that this, combined with Lee's injuries, makes him wish for the medical expertise of Tsunade. Jiraiya reveals that he and Naruto are already searching for Tsunade. Guy asks that they be sure to find her, which Naruto vows to do. Guy is impressed by Naruto's courage and gives him his spare green jumpsuit, telling him it will make a huge difference in his training. Guy departs with Sasuke, assuming that Jiraiya is just as ecstatic by the jumpsuit as Naruto is. He isn't. Sasuke Recovery Mission When Tsunade is brought back to Konoha to become its new Hokage, Guy tracks her down just after she's finished healing Sasuke and Kakashi and begs her to look at Lee. After examining Lee, she agrees with the other medic's assessment that the damage is too severe for him to continue life as a ninja. She can heal him, but she confesses that there's only a 50% chance that Lee will survive the procedure. She suggests he not take the risk. Lee is crushed by the news and leaves. When he's gone, Guy shares his regrets for having Tsunade look at him, as now Lee's lost the hope he'd had up until now. Guy later finds Lee in the same spot where Lee first shared his dream of being a splendid ninja. Lee muses how far he's been able to get in his career using Guy's lessons of hard work and believing in himself. But he now fears that neither of those things can help him in his current situation. Lee asks Guy what he should do, to which Guy says that Lee has two options. He can give up on life as a ninja and experience great pain for abandoning his dream, or he can get the operation, and if he dies, then he'll at least die pursuing his dream. Guy thinks Lee should do the latter. He reminds Lee of his vow to dedicate his life to making Lee a splendid ninja, and therefore if Lee's life should end, so will Guy's. Lee is moved by Guy's words and decides to go through with the operation. Guy is forced to leave Konoha on a mission while Lee is in his operation. Viva Dojo Challenge! Youth is all about passion! In the anime, Guy hears about a dojo that Lee has opened. Guy prepares to challenge Lee in a fight by poorly disguising himself as a stranger, but is called away on a mission before he can issue the challenge. When he visits the dojo afterwards, he runs into Nanafushi, a thief disguising himself as Lee, and quickly knocks him out. Third Great Beast Arc In the anime, Guy goes on a mission with Yagura, a ninja of seemingly greater talent than Lee. During the mission, Guy discovers it's not really Yagura, but actually one of the three Ryu Doin brothers, who, along with his brothers, seeks vengeance on Guy for their father's death. They trap Guy and Lee in a castle and force them to fight each other through artificial mute proxies. They discover this trick by communicating through Morse code, then break out by opening the first five gates, the stress of their high-speed attacks causing the constructs to break apart. Guy afterwards explains that he wasn't responsible for their father's death, and their father actually respected Guy, causing the brothers to apologize. Konoha Plans Recapture Mission In the anime, Guy leads Konoha's available Jonin to stop a suspected invasion by Takigakure. They later discover that the Takinin are just having a training exercise. In Naruto's Footsteps, The Friend's Path in the anime, about two years after Naruto leaves Konoha to train with Jiraiya, another Chunin exam is held. Guy proctors the preliminary round between the first and second stage. Participating teams must reach the Demon Desert within three days in order to qualify for the second stage. During this period, Team 10 is nearly killed by a giant scorpion while they search for food, so Guy gives them some. Once the preliminary round is over, Guy watches as the second stage formally begins. Kazakage Rescue Mission Tsunade sends Team Guy to provide backup to Team 7 on their mission to rescue the 5th Kazakage from Akatsuki. On their way to Sunagakure to meet Kakashi and the others, they're intercepted by Pakun, who informs them that Team 7 has tracked the Kazakage to an Akatsuki base in the Land of Rivers. Team Guy is closer to the Land of Rivers than Team 7 is, so they change their course. On the way, they are attacked by Kisame of Akatsuki, who Guy doesn't know. Kisame covers the surrounding desert with water and fends off Guy's students' attacks with his Samehata sword. 
Seeing Kisame's abilities, Guy gets the feeling that he's met Kisame before, irritating Kisame that he doesn't remember him. Team Guy joins forces against Kisame, and Guy is able to take Samahara. But Samahara does not allow Guy to wield it, and Kisame, meanwhile, is able to trap Lee, Neji, and Tenten in water prisons so that he can fight Guy without interference. Kisame starts to overpower him, forcing Guy to open the first five gates and attack with Morning Peacock. Kisame is defeated, but when Team Guy examines his body afterwards, they discover that it's only a doppelganger meant to stall them. They continue on to the Akatsuki base, but when they arrive, they are unable to enter. When Team 7 arrives shortly afterwards, Kakashi identifies it as being a five-sealed barrier, maintained by one seal over the entrance and four more somewhere in the surrounding landscape. Neji locates the other four with his Byakugan, and Team Guy splits up to remove them. Although they succeed in bringing down the barrier, thus granting Team 7 entrance, each member of Team Guy is confronted by a duplicate of themselves as soon as the barrier is gone. Soon after, Guy and his clone start fighting, matching each other's attacks. After being evenly matched with his clone, Lee communicated to Guy and the rest of the team who were in the same situation and proposed the solution to become stronger than they had been when the copies had been created. Upon listening to Lee's words, Guy managed to get the upper hand in his fight and defeat his clone. Team Guy reunites with each other after winning their battles and departs to Team 7's location, arriving in time to cut off Datora's escape attempt. Unable to get away, Datora creates a suicide bombing clone, which Kakashi saves them from by using Kamui. Team Guy watches on as the Kazakage, dead because of Akatsuki, is revived by Chio in exchange for her own life. They attend her funeral in Tsuna a few days later before heading back to Konoha. Kakashi is too tired to walk due to his use of Kamui, necessitating that Guy carry him. Guy does so by giving Kakashi a piggyback ride and challenges their students to keep up with him. Although Lee is fascinated by his training regimen, the others are deeply disturbed. Akatsuki Suppression Mission In the anime, Guy attends Asuma Sarutobi's funeral with tears in his eyes. Three Tales' Appearance In the anime, Guy teaches Lee and Tenten how to use collaboration jutsu by tying them together. This turns out to not work. Surprise. Pain's Assault Team Guy returns to Konoha after completing a mission. As they approach the village's outskirts, they find a defeated Gamabunta, who informs them of the ongoing invasion of Pain. They rush back to the village and upon arrival, find Hinata Hyuga badly injured from her fight with Pain. After getting her medical attention, Guy and Lee prepare to help Naruto in his fight against Pain, only to be informed that Naruto has already won. Team Guy joins in the celebration when Naruto returns to the village. Past Arc, the Locus of Konoha in the anime, Guy makes a medicine to be given to Tsunade in hopes that it will bring her out of her coma, which Lee delivers. Power In the anime, Guy is part of a force sent to Hacho Village to help Team 7 in their fight with Kabuto Yakushi. When they arrive, Guy and Lee fight the nine-tailed Naruto clone, but find they must open the fifth gate in order to keep up with its strength and speed. After Kabuto retreats, the Konoha Nin investigate the hole to try and discover what Kabuto was so interested in. Paradise Life on a Boat while Konoha prepares for the approaching 4th Shinobi World War, Guy is part of a team assigned to guard Naruto as he's sent into seclusion, a fact Naruto is not to be informed of. In the anime, as they make their way to the destination in the Land of Lightning, they take an indirect route so that Akatsuki can't find Naruto. Before they can even leave the harbor in the Land of Fire, they're attacked by a giant marlin. They try to help a fisherman, Yusuke, catch the marlin, but Naruto discovers that the marlin is compelled to attack because of a shuriken embedded in its head. When the shuriken is removed, the marlin leaves them alone and they're able to set sail. Guy and the other bodyguards become seasick soon after their voyage, requiring that they briefly stop at Benisu Island until they recover. They next encounter a ghost ship, whose crew was killed by the giant corpse crab. Guy and the others help the crew avenge their deaths by defeating the crab, thus releasing their souls. As they continue their trip, Guy is kidnapped by a giant bird that wants Guy to babysit its chicks. When Naruto and the others come to rescue him, the bird takes them to a volcano where the ultimate summoning beast lives. Guy and the others team up with the bird and other local animals to defeat the beast. Continuing on, their food reserves start to run low, and Guy and Naruto, in their desperation, eat a mushroom purchased from bandits. The mushroom makes them act violently, but they regain their senses with the help of Shima's cooking in time to stop the bandits from stealing their cargo. Towards the end of their trip, Kakashi comes looking for Guy. Guy gets it into his head that it's not actually Kakashi, but rather an imposter and attacks him. 
When the others on board start defending Kakashi, Guy concludes that they are also imposters and attacks them as well. Kakashi is able to convince Guy that he's the real Kakashi by recounting something from when they were younger. Kakashi then explains that he's answering a distress signal that Guy sent. Guy has no memory of doing that and suspects he sent it accidentally, so Kakashi returns to Konoha. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown. Guy is battling seasickness by the time they reach the island turtle, and Aoba Yamashiro looks after him until he recovers. Once he's better, he goes to the Falls of Truth, where Naruto previously faced and overcame his inner self. Aoba dares Guy to do the same, suspecting that Guy's inner self isn't human. As his inner self emerges from the falls, it ridicules Guy for his old age and his loss of the youth he constantly preaches about. Guy demands that his inner self reveal itself, but what emerges from the falls appears to be an insect. Assuming that this is his inner self, and that it's been deformed by his loss of youthful spirit, he attacks it to mold it back into shape. Albo informs Guy that it's not actually his inner self, enabling him to recognize it for what it truly is, a pufferfish. Killer B emerges from the falls and informs them that it's not a pufferfish, but rather Kisame Hoshigaki of Akatsuki, who's trying to escape with information about B and Naruto. After quickly incapacitating B and Aoba, Kisame attacks Guy and starts swimming to the ocean to send out the intel he's gathered. They're unable to move as quickly as Kisame can swim, so B flings Guy across the island in order to head Kisame off. This isn't enough, so Guy summons Ningame mid-flight for him to use as a jumping off point to launch him the rest of the way. When he catches up, Kisame has already passed the intel to a shark, the identity of which he hides with 1,000 more so that the shark can escape the island. Guy tries to destroy the sharks with Morning Peacock, but there are too many and he's forced to open the seventh gate. Kisame tries to stop Guy with his giant shark bullet technique, which Guy counters with Daytime Tiger. The Daytime Tiger is unimpeded by the great shark bullet and directly connects with Kisame creating a giant aftershock that not only defeats him, but also destroys the remaining sharks. As Guy collects the intel, Kisame states his surprise that Guy could withhold a jutsu as powerful as the daytime tiger until their third encounter. Since Guy doesn't remember their previous two encounters, Kisame attempts to keep fighting, prompting Guy to knock him out. He takes Kisame back to the others so that Aoba can interrogate him. Rather than be used to betray his allies, Kisame breaks free of his confinement through sheer will, traps himself in the water prison so that Guy and the others can't stop him, and summons sharks to eat him alive. Guy deeply respects how and why Kisame chose to die, so vows to remember him for the rest of his life. They afterwards examine the intel that Kisame was trying to send, which turns out to be booby-trapped. They're each caught in a water prison and are trapped alongside a shark. Guy finally succumbs to the rigors of his earlier use of the Eight Gates and can't fight off his shark requiring the others to rescue him. Another shark, meanwhile, is able to escape with Kisame's intel. Fourth Shinobi World War, Climax Guy and Kakashi eventually leave the 3rd Division to join the original Naruto and Killer B in their fight with Tobi, arriving in time to stop Tobi from capturing Naruto. Guy frees Naruto from the coral that's restraining him, and they all attack the reincarnated Jinchuriki that Tobi is using as his six paths of pain. Tobi has two of the Jinchuriki enter tailed beast mode, following which the four tails attempts to swallow Naruto. Guy and Kakashi want to help him, but must deal with the others first. While Kakashi deals with the Jinchuriki, Guy repels the six tails' wisdom wolf decay using Morning Peacock. Naruto, meanwhile, is able to escape the four tails and release it from Tobi's control. Tobi forces the remaining Jinchuriki to also enter tailed beast modes, expecting to destroy Guy and the others before they can release another one of the tailed beasts. As five tailed beast balls bear down on them, Guy considers opening all eight gates. It ends up not being necessary as Naruto, by entering his own tailed beast mode, deflects their attacks and subsequently frees them from Tobi. Tobi is forced to recall the tailed beasts into the demonic statue of the Outer Path, which he uses against Naruto, B, Kakashi, and Guy. Fighting continues into the night, with neither side emerging victorious. When a light descends on the reincarnated Jinchuriki, a sign that the impure world reincarnation has been cancelled, Tobi takes drastic action and prematurely initiates the Tentails' revival. When they realize what Tobi's doing, Guy and the others focus on destroying the demonic statue before it can complete its metamorphosis into the Tentails. Tobi defends the demonic statue from all their attacks, and, as ever, is himself seemingly impervious to damage with everything passing through him. After the exchange, Kakashi notices some slight damage to Tobi's mask, which he has a theory about. To test this, he has Guy and Naruto attack Tobi. Guy allows Tobi to absorb the Soshuga he's been using, creating an opening for Naruto to attack with the Rasengan. Tobi phases through this, but Kakashi uses his Kamui on the Rasengan, 
causing Toby to take damage. This confirms Kakashi's theory that Toby is also using Kamui and must therefore have the companion shouting gun to Kakashi's. Toby confirms this, troubling both Kakashi and Guy because of what this may mean. Nevertheless, this information gives them a way of attacking Toby, though Kakashi is so distracted in thought that he doesn't join in until Guy brings him back to his senses. Their combined efforts succeed in destroying Toby's mask. When they see his face, Guy and Kakashi recognize Toby as Obito Uchiha. Guy and, in particular, Kakashi are surprised that Toby is Obito. Naruto doesn't know who Obito is, so Guy explains their history with him. Naruto notes that the past doesn't change the fact that Obito is now their enemy, which Guy agrees with and uses this to try to help Kakashi recover from the shock of seeing Obito. Obito is soon joined by a reincarnated Madara Uchiha, who decides to take Naruto's Nine Tails and Killer B's Eight Tails before the Ten Tails is revived. Guy helps defend them, entrusting Obito to Kakashi. But Madara is too formidable and Guy soon becomes tired. Madara tells them that the fighting against him is futile, which Naruto refuses to believe. Guy is moved by Naruto's confidence and attacks Madara with Daytime Tiger, propelling him away and leaving Guy no longer able to move. Naruto and the others team up to try and destroy the demonic statue, but they fail and the Ten Tails is revived. B carries Guy to Naruto, who takes him into his tailed beast mode to keep him safe while his chakra replenishes. Battle with the Ten Tails interrupts the process before Guy is fully restored, requiring that Kakashi support him. The Ten Tails attacks again, but they're saved by the arrival of the rest of the allied shinobi forces. Shizune heals Guy's injuries. When the Alliance restrains the Ten Tails, Guy and Lee open the fifth gate in order to join the attack against it, but the Ten Tails breaks free at the last moment and repels them. When Neji is killed in the following battle, Lee mourns for him. Guy comforts him by telling him that Neji will live on so long as they continue to fight for the cause that he gave his life for. Naruto gives them version 1 light cloaks to protect them and strengthen their attacks, which they and the rest of the Alliance use to remove the Ten Tails from Obito and Madara's control. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki Guy does what he can to contribute to the battle, but the prolonged fighting has left him exhausted and eventually Lee must help him walk, because Guy is an old man despite the fact that he believes he has a youthful spirit. Following Obito's defeat, they start slowly heading towards where the rest of the Alliance has engaged in another battle. Along the way, they notice the fifth Kazukage taking Naruto and Sakura in the opposite direction, towards where Obito was left in Kakashi's custody. Sensing something's wrong, Guy instructs Lee to head back against Ten Ten's objections. They get back in time for Guy to save Kakashi from a truth-seeking ball fired from somebody Guy doesn't recognize, Madara Uchiha. Guy is surprised to learn that it's Madara's, whose appearance has changed now that he's the Chinchuriki of the Ten Tails. Kakashi and the others explain that Madara is now impervious to all attacks except for Senjutsu and Taijutsu. Although the reincarnated fourth Okage is technically able to use Senjutsu, he can't do so in his current state. Guy therefore decides it's his responsibility to fight Madara and opens the seventh gate. He attacks with Daytime Tiger, but Madara survives and Guy weakened afterwards must be saved from one of Madara's truth-seeking balls by Lee. With Guy's attack having failed, Kakashi decides that they stand no hope against Madara. Guy corrects him. He still has the Eight Gates released formation. Kakashi and the Fourth try to convince him not to, but Lee tearfully understands Guy's reasons. As he punctures his heart to open the Eighth Gate, Guy thinks about his father and reflects that his comrades are precious enough to him to give his life protecting them. Guy attacks Madara with Evening Elephant, but the pain he experiences forces him to stop after only the first step. When Madara returns, eager to see what Guy can do, Guy starts over, sequentially delivering the first four steps of the Evening Elephant to Madara. Kakashi and the others, aware that Guy has a time limit, team up to eliminate some of the truth-seeking balls that Madara is using to defend himself with. This allows Guy to hit Madara with the Evening Elephant's fifth step directly. Madara survives and, though he's winded, he invites Guy to attack him again. Guy tries additional evening elephants that do gradually damage Madara, but with his life about to expire, Guy realizes he will need to use Night Guy if he hopes to end things. He charges at Madara and kicks him in the side, obliterating part of Madara's torso and shattering the bones in Guy's right leg. Guy succumbs to the use of all eight gates and passes out. His body starts roasting from the inside and his damaged legs begin to crumble into ash. Madara's body regenerates from the damage it received and he, as thanks to Guy for being such a great opponent, fires a truth-seeking ball at Guy to put him out of his misery. Naruto repels the truth-seeking ball and uses his new yin-yang release to stabilize Guy's life force. After attacking Madara, Naruto takes Guy to Lee and entrusts him to his care, assuring him that Guy will live. 
Kagya Otsutsuki strikes. Despite Naruto's attempt to stop him, Madara is able to cast Infinite Tsukiyomi, trapping the still unconscious guy and the rest of the world in a dream. Naruto and Sasuke Uchiha are eventually able to release the Infinite Tsukiyomi, thus freeing the world and ending the war. Because of the damage done to his leg in the final attack against Madara, Guy is confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Kakashi Hiden, Lightning in the Icy Sky A year after the end of the war, Konoha is hired to provide security for the maiden voyage of the Tobishachimaru. Guy, having always wanted to fly, has Lee sneak him aboard, threatening to stop being his teacher if Lee refused. When Kakashi catches him, Guy claims to have no interest in flying and that he merely wants to demonstrate that he can continue to be a ninja despite his leg injury. Kakashi doesn't believe him, but lets him stay and finds a place for them to ride out the trip as stowaways. During the voyage, the Tobishachimaru is hijacked by the Ryuha Armament Alliance, who demand that Konoha release their leader from the blood prison. They'll start killing hostages if Konoha takes too long, and will blow up the Tobishachimaru if their demands aren't met. While Kakashi confronts the hijackers to try and rescue the hostages, Guy assists Kakashi's Ninken with locating the explosive tags spread around the Tobishachimaru. Once all the explosive tags are dealt with, Guy also confronts the hijackers, drawing Rahyo into battle. Even though his leg is in a cast, Guy remains as fast as ever, allowing him to evade Rahyo's ice augmented physical attacks. He's even able to deliver some successful kicks, though he has difficulty disguising the pain it causes him. He brings out his Soshuga in order to engage Rahyo, but watching Soshuga's rapid swinging triggers his motion sickness. Rather than be debilitated by it, Guy turns into a fighting style he calls Sea Sickness Fist. While Rahyo struggles to hit Guy, Kakashi is meanwhile able to free himself from his restraints and fight Kahyo. Kahyo creates a large hole in the Tobishachimaru that starts sucking out the hostages. Kakashi catches Guy before he's sucked out too, but can't maintain his hold on the ship's hull. They and the hostages are saved by Sai, who takes Guy and the hostages to safety while Kakashi returns to the Tobishachimaru. Guy returns to Konoha and is summoned before Tsunade. He tries to come up with a plausible reason for why he was aboard the Tobishachimaru, but she doesn't believe him. She's forced to take a call from the third Tsuchikage before she can punish him, so she tells Guy to sketch the faces of the hijackers. A few months later, after Kakashi has become the sixth Hokage, Guy is training with Lee when he sees Kakashi reading a letter from Kahyo. Guy pretends disgust by their relationship, but states that he won't let it interfere with his duties as Kakashi's advisor. The Last, Naruto the Movie When the moon starts threatening to crash into the earth, Guy stays by Kakashi's side as he organizes Konoha's defense. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. Guy is invited to Naruto's marriage to Hinata. He gets up early one morning to do laps around Konoha until he can think of what present to get them. He invites Lee to join them, but Lee's just done the exact same thing and failed to come up with anything to get for Naruto. Guy suggests that Lee try coming up with a gift for Hinata instead, while he thinks of a gift for Naruto. Lee thinks about Hinata's post-wedding life of childcare and housework. Guy thinks of Naruto's post-wedding life of home maintenance and carrying groceries. Both simultaneously conclude that they should buy dumbbells to prepare Naruto and Hinata for their lives ahead. Completely satisfied with this reasoning, Lee and Guy embrace in a long, tearful hug. On the day of the ceremony, Tenten instructs Lee and Guy about how they should behave at weddings. Guy later congratulates Naruto at the wedding with a thumbs up. New Era while no longer able to continue active duty as a ninja, but still wanting to help the new generation grow, Guy became a teacher at the academy, giving regular lectures and instructing students in taijutsu. Konoha Shinden, Steam Ninja Scrolls On the day of the Five Kage Summit in Konoha, Kakashi and Guy met up before departing from the village with their escort Mirai Sarutobi. Later, the group arrived in the land of hot water. There, they found annual festival slash competition where a town was split between two beliefs on its origins some believing that it was a cat spirit and others believing it to be a dog spirit. While initially enjoying the festival, they found Kiba Inuzuka and his girlfriend Tamaki, a cat breeder, having begun to join in the feud on different sides due to their respective animal expertise. As their couple's argument began to make the town grow into a frenzy, Mirai stopped the chaos by producing a genjutsu of cat-dog spirit, telling the people to stop the feuding. When Guy believed the genjutsu to be a demon and attacked it, he accidentally knocked down the main wall that split the town convincing the villagers that it was a sign for them to truly come together. During a stop at an inn, they met a young orphan named Tatsumi, who despite having no money, was determined to visit all the hot springs in the land in memory of her late mother. At Mirai's request, it was agreed that the little girl can join them on their own trip. 
Later during the trip, Tatsumi and Mirai snuck off in hopes of a nearby hot spring rumored to let people talk with loved ones from the past. Kakashi and Guy soon found them, learning that the rumored hot spring was a ruse conceived by remnants of the near-forgotten Jashin cult to restore their former glory and power. Guy, along with Kakashi and Mirai, swiftly defeated the fanatics. Later, it was revealed that Kakashi and Guy's vacation was in fact a cover for their working with the Land of Hot Water to uncover the truth behind the missing girls. Versus Momoshiki Arc Guy watches the Genin battle it out in the final round of the tuning exams in Konoha alongside Kakashi and Iruka Umino. In the anime, as Metal Lee continued to struggle with his anxiety of too much attention on him, Guy offered to let the youth listen to his lecture at the academy, during which Guy voiced the importance of facing one's problems if they hoped to get past them, as he had to deal with his damaged leg. Demonstrating his point, Guy decides to have a sparring match against Metal and Iwabi in a two-on-one handicap. Guy decisively won, albeit it was even easier from Metal not focusing properly from so many people watching. Later, Lee decides to challenge his son to a match with many spectators, telling Metal that he had to win if he wants to learn the Eight Gates. During the match, Guy watches in pride as Metal began understanding the words he and Lee told him as he began to use his anxiety to fuel his performance and even momentarily accessing the first gate to win the challenge. The three then tearfully hug in joy at the proud moment, much to the spectator's discomfort. Ow arc. In the anime, Guy attended the memorial service for the fallen people of the 4th Shinobi World War. Naruto Shippuden the movie. Guy is part of Konoha's attack forces sent against Morio's army of stone warriors, a stall tactic while Naruto and his team help Shion reseal Morio. Naruto Shippuden the movie, The Lost Tower. 20 years in the past, Guy, Kakashi, and their peers wait in line for the grand opening of Ramen Ichiraku. Road to Ninja, Naruto the movie. When Naruto is sent to the Genjutsu world, he meets that world's guy. He is a depressive, unenergetic, middle-aged shinobi who thinks of himself as an old man past his prime. Abilities Despite a poor start in his ninja career, even considering himself a loser as a child, Might Guy's potential growth was openly acknowledged by the famous Sakumo. He ultimately proved himself a late bloomer, becoming an extremely powerful shinobi, recognized as one of Konoha's strongest. His skills have been acknowledged by the likes of Itachi Uchiha, who warned the entire Akatsuki not to underestimate him, and even his rival Kakashi, who was deemed worthy to become Hokage, had the highest trust in Guy to aid him in battle. During the Fourth Shinobi World War, he fought off the Six Tails alone, and with his fullest capacities unlocked, nearly defeated Madara Uchiha as the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, who compared Guy's performance to the first Hokage, albeit this nearly cost his life. Despite the permanent damage from the 4th Shinobi World War officially ending his ninja career, after continued rehab, Guy was able to adjust to this apparent handicap to remain as powerful as ever. Ultimately, Guy became recognized as a legendary shinobi. Taijutsu Because Guy had little talent in ninjutsu and genjutsu as a child, he dedicated himself to perfecting his taijutsu. His father, Dai, called this early knowledge of his own strengths and weaknesses a virtue most shinobi did not have. By adulthood, Guy is a taijutsu master, using his strong fist style to effectively adjust his attack patterns and battle tactics to best handle the situation with various unorthodox yet effective strikes. Ultimately, his fighting skills allow him to almost never have to rely on weapons. His skill has even been acknowledged by Madara himself, who believes Guy to be unsurpassed in physical combat. After losing usage of his right foot, Guy's style became more stationary, balancing on his left leg and positioning himself so his natural weight works with him. He will use his remaining limbs to battle, even striking with his right knee, and employing flips and handsprings to move about quickly. Guy has conditioned himself to the absolute peak of physical prowess by constantly challenging himself through various arduous training means. Without the aid of chakra enhancement, Guy's undeniable physical prowess has allowed him to perform various seemingly inhuman feats. With a single hand, he can casually plow opponents deep into a rock wall, and with even more effort, launch the foe clear through it and a great distance away. Likewise, his sheer speed is consistently able to attack an opponent before they're fully aware of his presence, if at all. His stamina and recovery rate lets him continue fighting for extremely long periods of time, or to return to battle ready in extremely short periods of time. 8 Gates Taught by his father at a young age, Guy is able to utilize any and all of the 8 inner gates. His mastery of this ability allows Guy to instantly open up the first 7 gates without the need of opening previous gates. 
With each gate he opens, different physical and mental attributes are unlocked to their fullest potential, enhancing Guy's physical, mental, and chakra capacities by considerable amounts. Consequently, his body can take on more damage the more gates he opens and the longer he maintains them, with using all eight gates near certainly causing eventual death. For this reason, Guy only opens a single gate in order to protect something or someone precious, a philosophy taught to Guy by his father and passed on to Lee. At the same time, Guy's extreme training allows him to handle opening the gates for longer periods of time, able to endure the sixth gate with only noticeable exhaustion, as well as resist the after effects of the seventh gate to continue fighting for a short period. By the Fourth Shinobi World War, Guy became able to withstand using the seventh gate repeatedly before succumbing to its effects, as well as immediately adapting to the immense pain of the eighth gate. Guy has created several different techniques that he can perform once certain gates have been opened. With the first gate, he can use the pile driving front lotus. With the third gate, he overwhelms opponents with punches through the reverse lotus. With the sixth gate, Guy produces a series of rapid punches that ignite his hands through air friction, which he calls Morning Peacock. With the seventh gate, he launches concentrated air pressure at opponents that violently expand on contact, creating what he calls his one hit kill move, the Daytime Tiger. With the 8th gate, his punches can create powerful shockwaves of air that can be used from a distance, that Guy calls Evening Elephant. Also with the 8th gate, he has Night Guy, a single kick of such speed that the space around him is distorted. Night Guy, though it almost kills Madara Uchiha as the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, is responsible for the irreparable damage to Guy's right leg. Ninjutsu while rarely performing any usage of ninjutsu or genjutsu, Guy is still capable of doing them. He has the ability to summon tortoises, such as Ningame. Additionally, he has a chakra nature of fire and lightning. Guy is at least knowledgeable about other ninjutsu, recognizing the four red yang formation, and speaking informatively about its power and difficulty. He is also able to dispel high-level genjutsu. Other skills. Guy has other practical skills that do not require chakra to use. He is proficient with nunchaku, and with his personal pair, Soshuka, he can smash through rock and trade blows with Obito's gun by. He trained Ten Ten extensively in using her various ninja tools, showing mastery of them himself. He at times makes herbal remedies to help Lee with his training, though their benefits are unclear. In his mostly one-sided competition with Kakashi, Guy has devised a way of combating Sharingan users by focusing on the positioning of their feet to predict their movements and negate the Sharingan's eye contact based genjutsu. Did you enjoy your video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.